In this video, we're going to take a look at the 6P70 final production model of the AK-12 that is issued to the Russian army. This rifle is, in my opinion, flawed in a few respects, mostly in relation to the selector switch of the rifle. The AK-12 itself is, if you didn't know, a 545 rival that serves to replace the various 74M variations in Russian service. The main advertised benefits to the 12 over the previous 74 rifle is that of the added accessory rails on the dust cover and gas tube, as well as the previously mentioned two round burst fire. The rifle also comes with an extended stock, and the magazines have these cute little windows and glowing magazine followers, so you can track the remaining rounds. That's pretty much the rifle in a nutshell. It is an incremental improvement over the 74 with a two round burst fire that is honestly a useless gimmick that causes issues with the selector. And that's a great place to start the complaining. But before we do, I should really put a disclaimer going forward. Despite the issues of this rifle, it is still a real joy to shoot and functions extremely well. This video was sponsored by Grayshop. Grayshop is a military gear retailer that specializes in Russian items and equipment including Russian-made vests, survival gear, and MREs. Grayshop provided the ammo for this video. This video is also sponsored by the military surplus store Commando Store, who helped with filming. Commando Store sells real military surplus items of all kinds, including my mascot, Gondola. In shooting this weapon, I don't see much of a difference between it and shooting a normal full-auto AK-74. Perhaps my taste is just not as refined? Anyway, burst fire on AKs is normally a feature seen on expensive prototype vaporware rifles that have measures to deal with the recoil, like the AN-94's complicated rocket surgery and the balanced recoil system seen on the AK-107 or the 6P-67. The two round burst, originally a three round burst on prototypes that remains on the final rifle itself, is a holdover that was probably taken from balanced recoil designs. It causes a couple of issues for the rifle. Firstly, and obviously, there isn't a balanced recoil system on the 12. While the recoil is low, it is still quite difficult to land two shots on target. When you do manage both hits, it's not precise, though there's always going to be a significant deviation that gets worse at range. And this is because AKs have a big piston in them that creates significant recoil impulse. Who could have guessed this would have been the result? <laughs> Without the ability to guarantee two direct hits near the same point of impact, I don't really see the point of a two round burst. It isn't more effective than shooting two rounds in semi, and full auto is honestly more easily kept on target during sustained bursts than burst fire itself. The burst fire is a needless extra feature, but it wouldn't strictly represent a problem on its own. As I've said, it causes a much more serious ergonomic issue with the fire selector. Taking a look at the earlier versions of the AK-12, they had a different fire selector that made switching to one of the positions fairly straightforward. Yet the final version went back to a more traditional fire selector, a very crowded four position one at that. Unfortunately, it isn't quite as traditional as you'd like, because the new AK-12's fire selector has a spring that keeps the safety extremely tight against the receiver. This makes quick transitions between single, burst, and full auto extremely difficult, as the positions are quite close to each other, and the safety wants to cling to its current position. With normal AK fire selectors, you can bend them slightly to adjust how much they press against the receiver. But this method doesn't work as well because of the new spring. The ideal method to switching between modes we found was to move the selector all the way down to single fire, then up to the mode you want rather than trying to descend your ideal mode outright. The selector is tight in a way that causes you sometimes to use too much force and miss full auto or burst fire. It's a real pain, and I hope I've articulated how really annoying the selector is. Had the designers been allowed to omit the pointless two burst, or had been allowed to go with a more interesting selector design, this wouldn't have been a problem. And no, I'm not going to elaborate how I know the fault isn't on the designers at Kalishnikov, but feel free to speculate on how I know. I've actually scrapped and rewritten the selector switch part of the script several times in an attempt to explain this issue best. I'm sure some people will comment about how the problem with the safety might be an issue with just this particular rifle, but I'm afraid it isn't. I took the time to confirm that the tight selector is common along many of the AK-12 rifles, older and newer. In that search for the confirmation about the selector, I also ran into some anecdotal examples showing fragility of some of the parts. 
like a few images of AK-12 furniture cracking, as well as damaged front sight hoods. I've also heard from Russian paratroopers reports of the AK-12 front grip assembly wobbling, even on newly issued examples. Though I'm unsure if these pictures and reports are indicative of the system at large, they could simply be teething issues with the still early production of the 6B70. Or they could be lemons. That's largely it for the problems of this rifle, so let's move on to another major change, the disassembly of the AK. There is no longer a button to remove the dust cover, it must be removed by a pin. You'd think that pin is a lever for removing the gas tube, but the gas tube is now welded to the receiver to keep the rail steady. The gas tube has a port that can be removed with a bullet or by strong hands in order to clean it better. The lower handguard can be removed using punches that are stored in the rifle stock. The stock also contains the cleaning rod. Pressing this hole under the receiver with a punch releases a pin that in turn frees the lower handguard. The rifle's grip also contains an oil bottle. The AK-12 overall has a pretty robust retainment system for the rails, and the only reason you need to fuck with the punches is to replace the polymer rails themselves if they ever get damaged. The rail system isn't exactly an impressive leap forward. I don't think it really represents an advantage over the previous 74M rifles. The Russian government could have saved a lot of money had they gone with upgrade kits that added rails instead of a new rifle. And they actually did with run the 74 and 3 system. I'm not sure what was wrong with that. Alternatively, they could have also bit the bullet and gone with the best, if more expensive, prototype version of the 12. But if the current Russian army helmet is of any indication, they probably didn't want to spend that much money, but just enough to be an unjustifiable waste. My only consolation about the AK-12 is that it might be a transitional model for some of the more impressive rifles that Kalashnikov tinkers with. Like the AKV 500 series that has monolithic metal rails that seems to fix all of the problems of the 12. But with 150,000 orders already placed, that transitional model hypothesis is unfortunately just not the case. This rifle isn't much more than an incremental upgrade and still has ergonomic issues, but at the end of the day it still shoots comfortably and smoothly with little recoil, and represents an excuse to get some more optics for the Russian army. Like new versions of the Valde holographic sight that, while extremely fragile, no longer have the blue tint that Forgotten Weapons whinged about. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please consider supporting me on Coffee or Patreon, as these projects are ridiculously expensive and I am a one-man show that gets by from working with a lot of my friends. Remember, tanks and rifles today, fighter jets and nuclear missiles tomorrow.